here with Keith. Keith, what's going on, big dog? Just an, another fabulous Thursday. It's Thursday. Fabulous. Yeah, Thursday. We don't record Thursday. on Thursdays. Yeah, this is new. I like it. It is. So why don't we talk about something? Everyone talks about acquiring clients, and everyone parrots the same exact shit. Okay? What I have found is when you look outside the box and you think outside the box, you'll be able to find ways that might work a lot better than what everybody is doing mainstream, right? I've read a book probably four years ago called Marketing Outrageously. I forget who wrote it. I will look that up here in a second. And what this guy did was he actually, and this is genius, he would download his or, or target his exact avatar. I think he was selling B2B. So he would look up the business owners. He would actually mail them a rubber chicken that squeaked probably about two feet, put it in a tubular package with a handwritten note. This whole setup probably cost him about 12, 12 bucks. His response rate on that was through the roof and it opened so many doors for him that he couldn't have ever gotten into through email, through phone and through any of these other methods. And so I've heard people mailing baby shoes as well. These things that when you think outside the box will produce much better results. Oh yeah. So let's talk about it. What do you got Keith? Yeah. The outside the box thing has to be a, a part of your marketing today. And especially in today's world where everyone thinks that you can just log into social media and gain followers and gain business and gain prospects. Mm -hmm. Now, social media is a, is a good place to get prospects, but if you're just doing the mundane bullshit, hey, Jonathan, my name's Keith. How are you? And I know yes. your next fucking punchline is, let me teach you how to trade Forex, right? Or yeah. whatever the fuck people are doing. I don't even I don't even read those fucking things anymore. Right? I just hit block. And traditional TV methods, radio methods, and those things work. However, they're not the go-to strategy, and they can't be the only thing that certain people are doing. Written copy, magazines, and like up here in Jacksonville, Florida, we've got the Mint Magazine and the coupon books. Great. Cannot be your go-to. Um, so some of the strategies that are now becoming popular are webinars, right? Events. These are not things that you want to do to make a sale. They're things you want to do to create a list of potential candidates that now you can engage, create a relationship with, and then generate them into a nurture to become a client. Mm -hmm. Not go for the gusto out of the gate. Those days are over. No one buys in the first date anymore, right? And if you do, you got the word sucker tattooed around your forehead, right? Everything now in sales as it relates to can I make a sale first needs to be established with some sort of relationship and value add components, right? So when I think outside the box, I'm thinking, okay, I need to provide education so that people know that I am the person to utilize when this need becomes apparent in their world. So webinars are a great opportunity, right? Hey guys, I'm going to offer a webinar on this topic. Here's what you can expect in the webinar and sign up below, right? Absolutely. We created a, a, a generic webinar that now we can just plug into our clients and give them, hey, you want to shoot a webinar? Here's a webinar template. You just need to upload your logo, your color brand template, and some copy of what you want to talk about and hit enter. It'll populate, and then that webinar feeds into your Go High Level or you know whatever project management system you're using as far as nice. clients are concerned. A webinar gives you mad power. Because you get to interact with people face to face, you're providing value and you're getting top of the line questions asking that if you're smart, you keep those questions back and then now you go create posts yep. and other reels about those same questions. Because if you get those questions from one or two people in a webinar, there's a million fucking people who have that same question. Exactly. Right. So that's what we've been doing lately uh, as a lead gen and then just offering like, we built some affiliate partnership programs and B2B partnership programs for our clients. So if like for you, right, and lending and financing, 
you need to be talking to contractors, heavy equipment, machine companies, right? Yep. Big construction businesses. So what you do is create this B2B partnership where you're able to put their shit on your website. They're putting your shit, their, your shit on their website. And now you're organically passing traffic back and forth. That's another value add opportunity that you're Absolutely. not working on. So those are two big ones that we've been working on lately that have been super successful in generating leads. But now it's on us to now massage those leads into an absolute killer of a client. What are you doing outside the box right now? I, first, I, I love what you just said. The webinar thing has always been amazing. And people don't understand when you're one to many, okay, and you have something or you may create a webinar, if it's really good, you can keep refining it, making it better, and then just let it play on repeat. So it's just driving traffic to it, let them sign up, and then go. So I love that. The other yeah. thing is you mentioned the time to engage the prospect versus when you close. Guys, if you're listening to this, understand the slower the ticket, that should be a quick sale, like instant, or you shouldn't even have to have anybody. Your copy should be so good that they're just going to buy it. Okay. Right. Think about it. You've never walked into a pizzeria and asked them 30 questions about a slice of pizza. Why? Because if it sucks, you're just going to throw it out. Okay. Higher level or higher ticket sales obviously needs a salesperson, a lot more information, a lot more back and forth. If you're doing it right, where you're making sure it's a fit for you and a fit for the client. So to answer Keith's question, some of the things that I have been working on, one, intake forms. It's something I am starting to test. Why am I testing intake forms? Because we're in a point where we're so busy that I want to pick and choose who I can't help and maybe send them somewhere that would be a better fit. And then I just want to be able to work with the people I know I'm going to get the best results for. For example, Keith, when we, before we even got on here, he gave me a great, a couple questions I asked and they make a big difference. Hey, have you had a bankruptcy in the last seven years? Because if they have, there's no point in me inviting them to a workshop to build their business credit. Because that bankruptcy is going to follow them, no matter how strong their business credit is, until they're seven years removed from it. All right. So there are just certain things that as you are an operator and as you're learning and as you're doing these things, you're making these mistakes and you're fixing it and you're making these adjustments with the end goal to serve more clients and to become way more efficient. Now, what are some unique things that I am doing? And I don't even know if it's unique. I don't think it is. I actually learned it from Dennis Yu, who, if you don't know him, look him up. He's one of the original guys that uh, did uh, Yahoo's search function. I spent about an hour, my team spent about an hour with him. He's absolutely brilliant. And basically what he said was, go through, think about what your clients need, think about what they want, think about the questions they ask, every day make a reel, put a little bit of money behind it, a dollar a day for seven days, on, on paid ad. And then the ones that take off, you obviously want to put more and more money behind it. And so here's what I love about that strategy from a personal brand. And this is great for some of you guys that are, let's say a million dollars and under in revenue and, or you're just starting out. And I'm sorry if, if it just so happens that you're offended by that, this ain't the fucking show for you. But if you, you need to develop your personal brand or you're younger in business, this strategy is amazing. If you are trying to build a brand, you are going to have to do this around your, your brand pages. I have not done that yet, so I can't comment on the results, but so far on a micro test, doing this for about three weeks, I will tell you uh, my engagement is through the roof. My lead flow, my deal flow is through the roof. Hence why I needed to work on the intake form. Okay. So these are certain things that I am testing and implementing every day as we speak. And this is current. The only other thing that I am working on is a couple of tech based things that revolve around partnerships. And I don't think it's going to add all that much value to listeners. So I, I would just talk about the partnerships to model that type of growth or so you guys can model that type of growth in your business. Keith, what else comes to your mind in terms of outside the box acquiring clients? 
Yeah, so like you, you've got to – what's worked well for us is figuring out unique business partnerships that let's just say a real estate agent is the example. Mm-hmm. Everyone wants to be friends with a realtor because they think a realtor is going to turn them on. The lawn, the landscape company and the roof people and all these people want to be friends with a real estate agent. Fuck that. There's a billion real estate agents in the world selling 0.02 homes a year, right? So if you're going to go that route, you have to find the king crusher real estate agent who's doing massive volume. Guess who else is trying to find that same person? Every other roofing company in the world, every other this person in the world, every other that person. So what we've done a really good job as like taking a step back and figuring out how do we weed out who we don't want to go after anymore. And what we've done, our test of that was like, let's launch all of these funnels. Let's launch these funnels to engage the people and see who's coming to us for like the partnership opportunities. Hey, we're going to white label our company. Are you interested? Who's coming in the door to see what our value add is, if they can use us or not. Once we figure out like a segment of clientele that is similar, then we start targeting that silo of business because it's apparent that they're interested in what we do. Yeah. So we're probably interested in what they do. Mm-hmm. We've had massive success in that. And then also... I think what you touched on is utilized extremely, and that's how do we weed out people we shouldn't be spending time with. On all the websites that we've produced, on all these different automations, it's always a form fill. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Where are you? What do you do? Revenue this. Whatever your qualifiers are, those need to be things that are out in front of people early so you can either get them in your system or push them out of your system. There's nothing worse today than spending an hour on the phone to find out that someone's not qualified for you to do business with or them to do business with you or you to be a referral partner. You basically just wasted time smelling each other's ass for an hour to do nothing. And if you've ever gone to a dog park, that's the worst shit in the world to see dogs just running in circles, smelling each other's ass, knowing that nothing's going to happen. It's fucking annoying. It's the same in business. Talk to people all the time. They're like, oh, man, I'm just not finding success in business. Well, what do you do during the day? Oh, I get on Facebook and I make a post at 6 and then I make another post at 730 and then I make my funny post at 930 and I'm just waiting for people to come. I'm like, motherfucker, that's a dying breed. Okay, that's almost as bad as you saying that I'm going to go throw a mastermind. Okay, let's talk about masterminds for a little bit. They're played out. 90% of the people throwing these masterminds are fucking thieves. They Mm -hmm. deliver shit value. They overcharge and then they leave Mm -hmm. Uh, and then they get caught and then ultimately their shit burns to death and nothing works. Masterminds. If you're going to a mastermind, guys, you're not going to get business from a mastermind. I don't know. I don't know who told you and sold you that lie, but you going to any kind of mastermind, you have a slim to none chance of actually picking whatever the thing is, a mastermind, get together, a business expo, whatever you want to call these things is not the place to go solicit business. Can you learn from those things? Sure. You're probably not going to learn a lot because you're going to go there with the intention of trying to secure business. And so is every other person there. It's just a business orgy. I think I'm just going to sell to this person. They're going to sell to me and we're going to sell to each other. You have got to literally step back and play this out like a chess game. Yes. Who is my most advantageous client and where do I find them? And if that's played out, you have to find a new advantageous client. You have to find a new avatar and you have to look at other places where no one else is looking, right? The baby shoe thing, dude, I did that shit back in 2015 when I was selling life insurance and I couldn't get past the gate. I couldn't get past the gatekeeper. Oh, I told you the story. I don't know if that's my story. I'm sure other people have done it. I heard it on a podcast and I just janked it and started doing it. Okay. I couldn't get past the gatekeepers at doctor's offices, right? And so I just started a little hand, a little note Mm -hmm. with a shoe, just trying to get my foot in the door. Would love to get a time to meet with you, phone call, Zoom, whatever I can get. I used to... Up to the front, never happens. 
I would say out of every 10 mailers I would send out, I'd probably get four or five comments back. Emails, even if it was like, hey, man, that's the funniest shit I've seen in a while, I'm still not interested. I would take a no way yeah. quicker than I will take a no answer. Yep, no is absolutely. my favorite answer. So my goal back then was to get you to say no so that I could move on to someone that would say yes. And so those little things that people would be like, that's the dumbest fucking idea I've ever heard of. That's what you guys need to go find out and do those things. Yeah. So here's another thing that I like for the guys that have established businesses, right? And you're looking for partnerships. You have a lot of resources that most of most entrepreneurs don't realize they have. All right. And so what I want you guys to do, if you don't have a lot of clients or you're younger in business, I want you to think about everybody else that serves your ideal client in every thing that they do that relates to what you're serving. Okay. So I'll just use my business for an example. The obvious choice is anyone that's an accountant, a bookkeeper, any fractional CFOs, anybody like Keith. Okay. Those are the people that would typically refer us the most business. All right. And everyone targets them. That is not a secret in my industry. However, Think about it. What about the guys that they're going to set up their payment processing? Even though that's a service we offer, I don't need to compete with that guy there. In fact, maybe I could send him some business if he's very good at what he does, and then he can reciprocate the favor. That's a win-win. That's one of our core values. If you look a little bit deeper, business education. Okay, I can give away business education for free. Why? Because I want everyone to get better. I want everyone to win. And eventually at some point, if they need a new piece of equipment, they want to buy a new business or they want to buy a building or something like that, they will reach out to the guy that they think is the most professional and the most helpful, right? The guy that they have seen doing it over and over again. So if you don't have clients, that's the way to think about how do you hunt for partnerships? And I would try to get two or three sources removed or two or three steps removed. Now, the next thing you could do is if you do have a lot of clients and nobody fucking does this, I know the survey things are annoying as shit. However, if you can give them something that is tangible and that is valuable to them, you can get all the information you need out of them. And so you can ask them, well, where else do you go for things related to this? Is there anything in the store or anything on my website that I don't carry that you would like to see me carry? Okay. Is there this information you can literally, if you get enough of the same answers and the same questions from your ideal clients, you can take your business and go advance it two years just by going and looking at what the basic things that your clients are asking, what they need, what they want, what you can improve. And if you can show them that you are responsive to the masses, okay, they will not only continue to buy from you and continue to buy more, they're going to send people there. And in reality, all this outside the box thinking is amazing. and It will advance you well beyond where, where you are today. But if you have a shit product, a shit service, or if you have things that are wrong in your business, and people aren't leaving your business absolutely fucking thrilled. If they're not raving fans, yeah. you are doing it wrong. And it doesn't matter how much you spend on marketing, how outrageous or outside the box you're thinking. Okay. If you're delivering shit, it's going to stop. And just being mediocre in today's market, when there's so much competition over that discretionary income, What's going to happen is the only people that are going to spread word of mouth are the people that you have gone over the top for, the people that you have created and made into Raven fans. A great place where you can start this is if you get actually like valid complaints. Okay. I'm not talking about the Karen that came in. She was having a bad day. And for whatever reason, she went off on an employee. I'm talking about, hey, you guys fucked up something or you could have done something better. Someone alerted you to that fact. 
Okay, the guy that took the time to write the negative review, if you go over the top enough, he will be the guy that not only writes you a positive review, but tells everybody that how you fixed a fuck up. And fixing a fuck up today is the one of the most valuable things that you can do for your brand and your clients because nobody does it. That's it. So if you do the right thing, you mix in thinking outside the box and you find some key partnerships. That can be better than any marketing campaign you ever spend money on. What else you got? Partnerships is where it's at. Yeah. Micro influencers. If you have a, if you're a brand clothing, brand style, whatever influencers are where you need to be going paid partnerships. Listen, no one's going to partner with you and wear your shit just to wear your shit where you get all the love. Okay. Yeah. So clothing brands, shoe brands, things like that. You need to be willing to share the resources, mm -hmm. share some of the profits to encourage these people to be brand partners with you. As it relates to like, back to your comment on raving fans, I don't think raving fans are the ones that are talking about you. It's the people who you have delivered a shitty process to. It's the people who you let down. It's the value you didn't give. Those are the ones that are going to talk. Okay. People who are upset with something talk way more than the motherfuckers who are pleased. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying the ones that are pleased don't go out and tell their friends, but you're going to hear more than negative people because that's the world we live in today. So, my focus in our business today isn't how can I go over the top for you? It's how do I not fuck this up? That's, that is the goal. How do I deliver the product, the solution? How do I deliver the tangible thing in a way that is hitting all the marks and there's no negative piece to it? I will take less money and give you what you need as long as I know that I can fulfill what you're asking me to do early on in my career, before I, you know, had 40 plus employees, you made this point earlier. You have to listen to your audience. If they're asking for things that you cannot do right now, you better go find a white label partnership to then bring that solution to the table. Right. You may not make the same amount of money. You may not make a bunch of shit. And I'll give you a perfect example. Back before we had a payroll service, I was getting asked by our clients all the time. Hey, I need you to help handle my payroll. I, need you. I didn't have a payroll company then. I went and interviewed 12 companies that did payroll services. And I found one that was simple to use. It was very, it was something very easily integratable into our clients' worlds and they handled all of the work as if they were part of Tideland Consulting back then. Customers don't know. I didn't have to say this isn't part of, no, you need a problem fixed. I will fix your problem. Once that started taking place and I saw that, I did that with four or five other avenues in the business that I just didn't have the bandwidth to generate and start up from scratch until I was driving enough revenue or then I could get rid of the white label service and generate it myself. And so I think a lot of people don't even know that's an opportunity. If you're a small business and you don't have a plethora of resources to be able to financially support that, go find someone who's already doing it. Hey, Jonathan, you do financing. I've got a shit ton of clients I can bring your way. Here's my ask. Give me a little bit of the revenue. Act like you're part of my company when we do this. White, let me, you white label my business. I will bring you the clientele that 99% of the time compliance aside, those conversations. For because everyone is looking for new client generation. If you provide a service, call companies. Hey, man, I provide payroll services. I'd love to have an opportunity for you to white label us and us to come in and act as you and do this for your clients. Here's our operation. Here's our process. Here's how easy it is, right? We got to think outside the box. These are relationships that no one's calling and courting. Yeah. No one's taking advantage of this for the most part. White labeling is a quick, easy, sufficient way for you to grow your business. You just have to do the due diligence on the front end. 
Yeah. Make sure that they're well-spoken. Make sure that they're legitimate, up to speed, fast, quick, customer service is on point. They need to match your brand tonality. Yes. And if you so, can, that's a quick way to do it. Yeah. So I want to highlight that, guys. Keith is not signing up anybody. Okay. He is consistently reviewing everything they do, their core values to make sure it matches. I have made that mistake multiple different times. In fact, if somebody wants to partner with Integrated today, they go through a process. It's not, all right, just send me what you got. I have turned away a ton of potential partnerships because of who it was or what they were selling. I will not be doing that. All right. I got I one time a couple of years ago, there was a group that we did not vet. They didn't do the right thing. We cut them off. Had we kept going with them, it would have been a disaster. Okay. So if you do get a partner that starts going sideways on you or doing the wrong things, that can be as damaging to your brand as an employee that is acting in a negative or awful manner. So be very careful with that. Yeah. Another, another thing you guys can do and that I do often is I do group trainings. Okay. I don't ask to get paid. Okay. People reach out, they look at my content, they see my stuff and they ask, Hey, can you speak to my group on X, Y, Z? Sure. And then they ask, Hey, how much is it going to be? I said, I never, I try not to charge. And what I rather do is promote something that I know is going to give the group an, an incredible amount of value. And I know I set up these value ads intentionally. Let mm -hmm. me give you an example. If you were to come to me today and say, Hey, build me your business credit. Depending on if you took other programs or not, that's going to cost between two and 3000 Okay. We're having a mastermind workshop, a one day workshop, end of June. I think it's, let me get the date here so I can have a shameless plug. This wah, date, wah, wah. Wah, wah, wah. It's, it's June 29th. Okay. And so what we're doing is we're having entrepreneurs come to the office and we are going to build their business credit for them. And then we are going to talk about growth and uh, growth strategies. And then I am going to end with very high level financing and growth strategies. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be a full day event. That event, I'm probably only going to charge 1500 bucks. Why? Because everyone that's showing up is getting a massive deal. Okay. Second, it's a lot of face to face time. You have a much higher likelihood when you are face to face or belly to belly with somebody to de de develop a real relationship. Okay. And those people that are coming in there, after we deliver the type of value that we know we will during that event, afterwards, if they need anything, who do you think they're going to go to? It's a no brainer. The people that mm -hmm. have provided an obscene amount of value for a very little bit. Okay. And that, that guys is business in a nutshell. It's not hard. Do the right thing. Think outside the box. Don't do what everybody else is doing. Try your own shit. Fail a million fucking times. Get back up a million one. Learn yeah. from each failure and keep it moving. Give you one more and we'll call it a day. Awesome. Everyone open up their Facebook account and type this into your status. I'm looking for podcasts to be a guest on. Period. If you have a podcast, hit me up. I Quickest love, way to get into something. other ecosystems is to get on other people's podcasts and get introduced to their world of their followers and their people. Okay. I started doing that 2017, 2018, when podcasts started becoming really very popular. I would do three or four podcasts a month and I would do it and say, hey, Jonathan, I'm going to talk about tax mitigation strategies and the difference in 1099 versus W2 to your entire sales team. How many people do you think could get to, you could get to show up? By the way, this isn't to target your employees. This is so that I can provide massive value to you so that when you need something down the road, you think back and say, he's a motherfucker who gave, he also does what I need. Let me call him. Yeah. Right. So that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is if you're getting on an influencers podcast, Maybe they got five, six, seven thousand people that are listening. 
don't get on there and be a stooge and try to sell shit. Okay. Don't be that guy or that gal. Get on there and talk about ways that you can provide value to the listeners and give the game away. If you know what to do and how to do it to mitigate taxes, go write out the top eight strategies on how to do it. So anyone listening can go implement that shit into the world today or investments or life insurance or whatever the topic is. Find something that would be relevant to those listeners and figure out a way to give them shit that they can go implement in their world today. You start doing that, you're going to get followers on Facebook and Instagram. You're going to get people paying attention to you and you will get business. The key to all of this shit is no matter what avenue of outside the box marketing or what shit you send people in the mail, if you rush the game, you will lose the game. Mm -hmm. The game is a t well played time profession game. You got to know when to strike. You got to know when to ask for the sale. And if you come out on the first date thinking that you're going to get lucky, you're probably not going to get lucky. You might get lucky, but you might catch some shit you don't want to. Yeah. So you got to be careful. Got to be careful. Oh, that's awesome. Guys, with that being said, we dropped a ton of value here. Please implement these strategies. The best thing you could ever do is say, hey, we tried, we did X, Y, and Z, like just like you said, and we grew 20%. Okay? So please share this with someone that needs to listen to it, and we will catch you on the next one.